Well, welcome back, and what a beautiful song that we heard this morning, and we believe that God can take what the enemy means for evil, and he can certainly turn it into something good and positive in your life. And we've been talking about that very thing throughout the last several weeks in our sermon series, Trusting During Trouble, and we're going to continue in that series this morning. And so if you have your Bible app, go ahead and get that open, and you'll find the space there to put your notes in. Uh, if you don't have the Bible app, you want to grab a, a piece of paper or pen, something to write on, uh, we'll give you a few minutes to do that as well. And we think it's good to take notes when we're studying the Word of God. It helps us to retain information, and if we can retain information, then we can apply that information later in our lives when things arise again that we need to that, uh, the scriptures and the notes and the thoughts that we can help us out with in those situations in life. I want to begin by reading our key verse for the series, which is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 31. And verse 6, and the writer in Deuteronomy said, So be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, and do not panic before them, for the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will never fail you nor abandon you. And I really want you to get this verse deep into your heart this morning and throughout this series because you may be facing some troubles or some problems right now, or you will face some troubles and problems in the future. And from time to time, those things will seem overwhelming in your life. And this verse in Deuteronomy says that you can trust God because he will go before you, he will never abandon you, and he will never fail you. And an important part of this process is a thing we call perspective. And I want to talk to you this morning about perspective. Perspective is how you see your problems. It's how I see my problems. And the reason your perspective is so important is because problems are exaggerators. And what I mean by that is that problems and troubles cause stress, they cloud your judgment, and they tend to make things seem worse than they really are. And so I want to try to illustrate this this morning, and, and Pastor Robbie has hooked me up with a fog machine today, and I'm going to see if I can't get this fog machine to do uh, what I need it to do here this morning as we talk about perspective and how it affects our lives and how our problems and how our troubles put us into a fog. Now, what a fog does is it makes it hard to see clearly and it causes you to make some really bad decisions. And so I know right now, most likely at home, you're having a little trouble seeing me through this fog. And I'm, I'm having some trouble seeing the camera through this fog right now. And so it causes me to make decisions that are not necessarily the best decisions for my life at that time. And it causes me to make some choices that are not really good choices for me. And it does not matter how smart you are, it doesn't matter how spiritually mature you are, it is hard to see clearly when you are in the fog of your troubles and your problems. And this is a very dangerous place to be because when there is a fog of trouble or fog of problems in your life, it can take a situation that may be a level three on a scale of one to ten and it becomes a level 10 problem immediately. Maybe you didn't get that promotion that you thought you deserved on your job. And so you go into this fog and you begin to yell at your boss or yell at your supervisor because you think because of the fog that you're in that your world is coming to an end. And so then your boss calls his boss, or your supervisor calls their supervisor, and now you find yourself sitting in a disciplinary meeting, and what was a level three or a level four problem now has escalated to a level nine problem. Some of you this morning are, are sitting in a fog of the COVID-19 virus, and it is beginning to weigh on you. It is weighing on your family. It is weighing on your finances. It is weighing on your psyche. And the longer this drags out, you sense yourself going higher and higher and higher on that stress meter. 
and the fog is surrounding you and it is hard to make the right decisions and good decisions and you're not exactly sure what you need to be doing right now. And so maybe you're watching this morning and today you're at a seven or an eight. Maybe you've already hit the 10 mark on that scale, or maybe you've shattered a 10 mark and you are off the scales right now with your stress and your worry and your problems and your troubles. And do you know one of the very first things that people do when they find themselves in a situation like this where they're surrounded by the fog of trouble and the fog of problems is so often they cut themselves off from God. And so they don't spend time praying and they don't spend time going to church regularly. And even though we can't meet in person right now, we can meet online. But when you find yourself in this fog of trouble and worry and, and problems, the temptation is to just back off and get away from God. Why? Because I can't see through the fog of my problems and the fog of my troubles that are around me. And so if you find yourself in the fog and what was the level five problem, whatever that problem is, the unexpected bill, the fight with your spouse, the, the bad grades you got on a, on a test recently if you're in school, automatically catapults itself to a level nine or a level 10 problem because you don't have God there to help you. Listen, when you're facing a problem, whether it is a career problem or a marriage problem, whether it's a money problem or a health crisis, whatever it is, whenever you're in that fog and you cannot see clearly, you may be blinded, but God is not blinded. I'm here to tell somebody this morning that God sees above the fog. He sees above the problem. He sees above the trouble. He sees above the crisis. He sees above the sickness. God sees everything in its entirety as it really is. And what seems so big and what seems so impossible from your perspective and, and my perspective, from God's perspective, not only is there a way through, but there is an opportunity for a great future. And so the key this morning is to begin to see every problem that comes into your life through the eyes of God. And when you do that, you begin to sense God's purpose. And you begin to sense God's peace. And you begin to sense God's power in your life. And so to help you begin to change your perspective, even if you're in the fog this morning, I want to give you some steps that will help you as you understand it. The first thing is this, that problems are a part of my journey. Problems are a part of my journey. Your problems and your troubles are a natural part of life's journey. Everyone faces problems. In fact, no one gets through this life problem free. And yet, a lot of Christians have bought into the myth that as long as you believe in Jesus, as long as you pray a little bit harder, as long as you live a little bit better, as long as you read your Bible a little bit more, as long as you fast a little bit more, that somehow God is going to remove every problem and every trouble from your life. And yet Jesus says the exact opposite of that in John 16. He said, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. What is Jesus saying? He's saying in this world, you will have problems and you will have troubles. They are going to come. But instead of looking at them from your limited human perspective, and instead of being overwhelmed by them or afraid or defeated or worried, Jesus says, I want you to know this. I have already overcome the world for you. I've overcome every problem, every worry, every stress. I have overcome it for you already. And so listen this morning. Your goal in life should not be to say, if I can just remove the problems from my life, then I'm going to be happy. That is impossible. Your goal should be to reframe your problems and to see them through the eyes of Jesus. And please hear me on this. The same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead that we celebrated last Sunday on Easter is the same power that is available to you today to help you overcome whatever life throws at you. 
The same power that raised him from the dead is the same power that wants to dwell and live inside of you and to help you overcome those things in your own life. And so seeing your problems from God's perspective does not mean that all of your problems will go away, but it will put you above the fog and help you realize that you are not alone, that God is with you even in the middle of your problem and in the middle of your trouble. So the first thing I, I need to learn is to begin to see things from God's perspective and to remember that problems are a part of life's journey. The second thing I, I need to know is that problems are partially incomprehensible. Now, I can remember when my daughter Ashley was in elementary school, and she would have math homework. Now, my wife will laugh at you, and she would even at me and even tell you that math is not my best subject. But I don't know when this happened. But sometime between the time I graduated high school and my daughter got into elementary school, someone decided that it would be a good idea to change how kids do math. And so here is an example of what it looks like. In the old-fashioned way, 32 minus 12 equaled 20. Now that's old-fashioned math. But the new math looks something like this. 12 plus 3 equals 15. 15 plus 5 equals 20. 20 plus 10 equals 30. 30 plus 2 equals 32. And all of that taken together equals 20. And I have to be honest with you this morning. This new math is incomprehensible to me. And I've got a feeling that it is incomprehensible to some of our parents and grandparents who are having to teach your kids at home right now. It is incomprehensible to you how they changed math so much since you and I were in school. See, but the truth is, when a problem hits your life, when a relationship goes sour, when an unexpected health issue happens, when you lose a loved one, it can drive you crazy trying to figure out why. Why is this happening? God, what is your purpose in all of this? God, did I do something wrong to deserve this? God, are you mad at me? Is that why this is happening? And here's the truth this morning. You may never fully comprehend the why behind the problems you're facing right now. You see, that's, that's part of the fog. And it is frustrating. It is frustrating because you can't see the full picture. But God says there are some things that are just too big for us to understand. And we will never understand them because we are not God. And that's what Isaiah says in Isaiah 55. God says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. And my ways are far beyond anything you can imagine. You see, God's plans are perfect. And even though God may not be causing the problem that keeps discouraging you or beating you down, God is at work through that problem to bring good out of the bad. He is at work to bring order out of confusion and life out of death. And why is that? Because that is what God does. From our foggy perspective, we can only imagine what his purpose is. From our foggy perspective, we can't understand all that God is doing and all that God wants to do. But as we begin to see things from God's perspective, no matter how much fog rolls around us, no matter how much fog there is in our lives, and we begin to acknowledge that God can see further than we see. When you begin to acknowledge that God can see over the fog that is in your life right now, that he understands more than you understand, that he knows more than you know, it begins to change our perspective on life. Let's get real for a moment. Let's just get down, as we say, where the rubber meets the road. Let's get where the nitty-gritty happens in life. You may never understand through the fog why your spouse can't get pregnant. You may never understand that. And it is fog all around you. You may never understand through the fog why your dad walked out on your family. You may never understand through the fog of life why your dream job never materialized. But if you will put your faith and your hope and your trust in Jesus Christ, there will come a time 
after your life on this earth has ended, when you stand in the very presence of God and you will see perfectly with God's perspective. And what was once foggy and clouded will now make perfect sense in your mind. And that is what the Apostle Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 13. Now we see things imperfectly, like puzzling reflections in a mirror. Has your life ever felt that way before? Has you ever, your life ever felt like it was imperfect? Like it was a puzzling reflection in a mirror? But then Paul says, we will see everything with what? Perfect clarity. And he says, I know now everything I know is partial and incomplete. But then I will know everything completely just as God knows me completely. So if you want to see from God's perspective, it starts with seeing those problems you're going through as part of life's journey. But you also need to know that some problems are partially incomprehensible while we are here on this earth. You may not understand it right now, but that's okay. Here's the third thing we need to learn. That troubles can, problems can create positive change. Problems can create positive change. And I know some of you are already thinking, Pastor Atkins, you have no idea what I'm going through right now. And I can't believe you're sitting there in that church building telling me that my problems are a good thing. Because if you could see my life from my perspective, you would know there is nothing good about what I'm going through right now. But listen, I'm not telling you that your problems are positive. I know that cancer is bad. I know that a broken heart is bad. I know that abuse is bad. I know that a parent abandoning their child is a bad thing. A financial crisis, giving up on a dream, failing out of school. Those are all bad things. They're not positive things. But I want you to understand that God specializes in bringing good out of bad. And he specializes in taking a negative and using it, if you would allow him to, for positive change. He wants to do that for you today. He wants to take your bad and your negative. He wants to take what was wrong, and he wants to turn it into something good and something positive. But you have to trust him with that. And here's the problem I think many people have. We want to hang on to our pain. We want to hang on to our hurt. We want to hang on to that broken relationship. We want to hang on to that person who betrayed us. Why? Because it is ours. It is my pain. It is my failure. It is my hurt. It is my whatever it is. I suffered it. I lived through it. I experienced it. And I don't want to release that to anyone. I want to hang on to this. And God is saying, if you will just release that to me and trust me with it, I will take your pain and I'll take your hurt and I'll take the negativity and I will turn it around. And what was once bad will now be good. And what was once wrong will now be right. But you simply have to trust me with it. Let me just ask you, are you willing to trust him with it today? You see, maybe you can't see through that fog. All you see is the problem that is covering the path that you're trying to walk on. But that's okay. You don't have to see the path because God sees the path. The key is for you to trust him. Whenever you face a problem, you have to overcome the fear and choose to grow through that problem. You have to reframe every problem that you face in this life as an opportunity for growth. And you have to trust that God is going to be there to help you bring something positive out of that in your life. In fact, Romans 8 and 28 is one of the most famous verses in the entire Bible. But it's also one of the most misunderstood passages in the Bible. Notice what the Apostle Paul writes. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good. Now just stop right there for a moment. And notice what it does not say. It does not say that God caused your problem. It says God causes everything to work together for good. In other words, God can take whatever bad thing that happened, even if he did not cause it, and bring about good and growth in your life. And then notice what Paul says. Paul says, this is not a promise for everyone. 
you have a part to play in this. He'll turn it into good for those who love God and are called according to His purpose for them. I wonder this morning, have you ever considered that one of the positive changes that God wants to bring into your life through your problems is godly people. In fact, let me ask you a question this morning. How many godly people are in your life right now? And let me just say that God never intended for you to do life on your own. God never intended for you to carry that problem and those troubles around all by yourself without help from anyone else. The truth is, a lot of times when problems and troubles come into our lives, we tend to keep people at a distance. You know, we, we are having to relearn how to live life. And they're telling us now, all the medical experts, Keep a six-foot distance between you and the next person. If you're in shopping, you're in Walmart or Lowe's or one of those stores, they say keep two uh, shopping carts between you and the other person, that much distance, to have a safe distance. And, and the problem that many people are struggling with right now is that God did not design us as human beings to live life and to do life by ourselves. He did not create us as human beings to live life in a quarantine state or a quarantine mindset. He didn't create us and put inside of us to live a socially distanced life. That's why so many people are struggling right now with this. That's why the depression rate is through the roof right now. That's why suicidal thoughts are through the roof right now. It's why people are turning to alcohol and drugs more so now than they have been before. Why? Because they're not used to living life this way. We are made to interact with other human beings. Human touch. Human hug. We, we're made and created for that. And yet so many times when problems come into our life, we tend to push people back and say, I can handle this. I've got this. I can do this all by myself. Can I just tell you this morning that if you are pushing people back and saying, I can do this by myself, I can handle this on my own, I know how to make this work, I know how to, to figure this out. If you're pushing people back, that is a sign of pride in your life. I don't need anybody. I don't need anybody's help. I don't want anybody's help. I can just do it on my own. That is a sign of pride rising up inside of you. And pride will keep you in a fog. But for some of you, it's not pride. It's shame. You don't want anyone to know about your problems because you are ashamed that you have problems. And some of you are bought into the myth that you have to be this perfect person and have a perfect facade and so you keep people back at a distance because you are ashamed of who you really are and you are ashamed of the problems that you have in your life. And so now we struggle with two issues. We struggle with pride and we struggle with shame. And pride and shame will always keep you in a fog. They will always keep you in a fog. They will always keep people at a distance. And they will always keep you from finding God's perspective in the fog of problems and in the fog of troubles. Here's the truth this morning. You need godly people in your life when you're lost in a fog like this. You need godly people who will help you see things that you cannot see on your own. You need godly people who will help you remember that God has a way out of the fog today. God's got a way out of that trouble. He's got a way out of your problems. He's got a way out of that sickness. He's got a way out of that financial problem. He's got a way out of that relational problem. God has a way out of the fog. But if you push people back and you keep people away, whether it's out of pride or whether it's out of shame, then you will always be lost in the fog. But God is saying, let my people in. Let my, my children in. Let that godly man, let that godly woman in. Let them fight through the fog for you and let them speak life and peace and hope into your life. And let them help you find the way 
through that fog to the path I want you to be on. Paul writes to the Galatian believers, share each other's burdens and in this way obey the law of Christ. For my harvest folks are watching me right now. You have heard me say this for years, but that is one of the reasons God gave us the church. So that when we face problems, that we have other people in life to come alongside of us and to help us share the burdens that we're carrying. To help us with those problems and to help us with those troubles. But you know what it also means? It doesn't just mean that people come alongside of me and help me carry my troubles and my burdens. It means that I get to come along beside of some other people and help them share their burdens and share their problems and share their troubles and whatever it is they're going through. I get the privilege as a child of God, as a part of his church, the body of Christ, to come alongside of those who are hurting and in need. And I get to share some of the burdens that they're carrying as well. How do you rise above that fog to see things from God's perspective? I can see my trouble and my problems as part of my journey. I see my problems as partially incomprehensible and also see my problems as a plan for positive change. And the last thing I want to tell you this morning is that your problems can create spiritual growth. This might be the most important and the most misunderstood part of seeing from God's perspective, that your problems can become a part of God's plan for your spiritual growth. To grow your faith, that's what we're talking about, spiritual growth, to grow my faith so that what can happen, that I can become more like Jesus. Now, I can't see you at home right now. You can see me. But I wonder how many of you right now at your home watching this or wherever you're watching this at, how many could stand to be a little bit more like Jesus? I'll, I'll raise my hand this morning. Could you stand to be a little bit more like Jesus? Maybe you could turn to your spouse or your child or your parents and say, you could be a little bit more like Jesus. That'd be all right with me. You see, we could all stand to be a little bit more like Jesus in our lives. That's what James talks about in James chapter 1. He says, dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. How many, how many of you, when troubles and problems come your way, see it as an opportunity for great joy? You see, that is a, an odd perspective, isn't it? That is seen from God's perspective. You see your troubles and your problems as an opportunity for great joy. But then James tells us the way to see him as great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. What is James saying? He's saying that even though God didn't cause your problem, God is working through it and using that problem to stretch your faith and to make you stronger and to make you more like Jesus. Could I just say this morning, that during this time of COVID-19, could we allow God to use this time to stretch our faith, to make us stronger, and to make us more like Jesus? What does that mean? It means that everybody else is worried. I'm trusting God. It means when you go to the store to buy the things that you need and everybody has lost their mind and they're grabbing everything they can off of the shelves... It means I'm trusting God. I'm going to be more like Jesus. And I'm going to take him at his word. We could say it this way. God uses your problems, every one of them, to make you more like Jesus. I guess we could say that when troubles and problems come into your life, one of two things will happen. One is you'll either become more like Jesus, or two is you'll become less like Jesus. And it really is a choice that we make for ourselves. I can become more like Jesus or I can become less like Jesus. And if you will look at your troubles and your problems from God's perspective, you begin to stop seeing them as truly and purely problems. And you start seeing them as opportunities to trust God more. And I'll be the first to admit it to you this morning. It's not easy to do that. It's not easy to see your troubles and your problems 
And so I'm just going to begin to trust God more through this. Because problems aren't fun. Because if problems were fun, we would call them adventures. But a problem isn't fun. It is stressful. It seems overwhelming. And sometimes they are scary. But fun is not part of what a problem is. But God cares about your problem. And from his perspective, there is something greater at work that you can't see because you're still in the fog. Paul writes to the Corinthian believers, and he says, For our present troubles are, what's he say? Are small. Small from whose perspective? Not my perspective, no. My present troubles are huge from my perspective, but they are small from God's perspective. And he says they won't last very long, but yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on the things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now, what is that? Our current troubles and our current problems. The things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. When you're in the fog, it is hard to see past your problem. It is hard to see past the present when you are in the fog. It is hard to see right now for some of you through the fog of COVID-19 and through the fog of being laid off and through the fog of being furloughed and through the fog of, of not being able to get together in church and through the fog of not being able to get together with your friends or your family like you used to. It is hard to see past that fog for the next several days or weeks or months because it looks impossible. But can I just tell you this? God is in this with you for the long haul. He is looking above and beyond COVID-19. He is looking at something that we really cannot even comprehend right now through the fog of trouble and the fog of problems. He is looking into your eternity in heaven with him. And if you could just see through the fog... And see what God already sees about your future. You would not have any fear, but you would have faith. And you would not feel panic, but you would feel peace. And for some of you watching me right now, I know that the problem that you're facing feels overwhelming. And you find yourself in the fog. And you may be discouraged. And you may feel beaten down. And you may not know what to do about it. But please hear me, trying to figure it out by yourself is not the answer. Trying to find your way through the fog by yourself is not the answer. The answer is to bring your problem to Jesus Christ and to ask him for his perspective and to lay your problem down and to begin trusting him to go with you and to bring you out of the fog. Our last verse in Matthew 11 says this, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. I wonder this morning how many of you watching could use some rest. You could use some peace, some peace of mind, peace of heart. You just wish you could just collapse into the arms of God, your Father. I say, Father, help me. I don't know what to do. I don't know which path to go on. The fog is too thick. The fog is too heavy. I'm lost in this fog right now. Would you help me? And Jesus says, if you feel that way and you're carrying heavy burdens and you find yourself lost in the fog, you can come to me and I will give you rest. So this morning, whatever you have need of, whatever you're facing right now, whatever fog of life you find yourself in, I want us to pray together. And you may just want to do what we did in the very first sermon in this series, when I said just place your hands on your shoulders and just symbolically hand that to God, whatever it is. 
hand that problem, hand that worry, hand that sickness, hand that stress to him, hand that depression to him, hand it over to God and say, God, I can't deal with this. I can't live in this fog anymore. I can't fight it any longer, but I'm giving it to you today and I want your rest. Where you're at in your home, wherever you're watching us, would you bow your heads? Father, I pray for those who are watching us right now. First, I pray for those who have never trusted you as their Lord and Savior. And they're living in a, song, uh, a fog of, uh, of, of lostness and a fog of life without meaning. They're living in a fog that they don't know what to do. They have no hope. If you're watching, you say, Pastor Atkins, I find myself in that fog this morning. I haven't trusted Jesus as my Savior. Or I trusted him years ago, but I've never pursued that relationship. All you have to pray is a very simple prayer. To say, dear Jesus, come into my life and forgive me of my sins. I'm sorry for how I have lived. I'm sorry for the things I have done. Both willingly and unwillingly. Forgive me for that. And from this day forward, I want to serve you. That's all you have to say. And he will come into your life and he will miraculously and radically save you and change your life this morning. If you prayed that simple prayer or something like it, make a note there today and tell us, I prayed that prayer with Pastor Atkins. For the rest of you, maybe right now you're in the middle of that fog, the fog of problems, and it is overwhelming you and you're stressed out. You, maybe you can't see your way forward. And so, Father, right now I pray for those who are watching, who are in the fog. They can't see clearly right now. They don't know the next step to take. They don't know the next path to walk on. God, I pray that you would help them see from your perspective. Pick them up above the fog so that they can see clearly what you know is best for them and for their lives. And I pray for those watching today who are carrying heavy burdens. God, they are some that are watching, that are trying to carry those burdens for themselves. And if that is you this morning, you're trying to carry that burden all by yourself, then right now I just want you to lay that burden, whatever it is, at the feet of Jesus. Lay it at the foot of the cross today. And say, Jesus, I know you can see further than I can see. And I know that you can carry more than I can carry. And so I'm giving my problem to you. Father, I pray you would take our fears and you would give us your faith. I pray you would take our panic and you would give us your peace. And I pray that this word be planted deep into our hearts, deep into our minds, deep into our thoughts as we Try to figure out life, this new normal, the fog of it. Let us always know that you're here for us. And you'll never leave us and you never forsake us. And I pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you this morning and thank you again for joining us here for our service. And as always, we want to give you an opportunity to give and to support the ministry here at Harvest Ministries. Let me say, as I have said every week, thank you for your support. Thank you for your faithful tithing and your giving. And uh, we still have obligations and responsibilities that we have to keep up with here, uh, just like you do with your home. But we believe what the Scripture teaches us about tithing, that if we will give 10% of all of our increase to God, that he will take the 90% that is left and he will bless that and stretch it beyond our wildest imaginations. And I know in times like this, in times of worry and stress and fear, I know in times like this, there is a temptation to hold on to everything that we can hold on to and say, I'll catch up later. Oh God, I'll get back to you later. Let me just tell you this morning, do what the scripture says, test God try God and see if he isn't faithful in your life. Many of you at this church, Harvest Ministries, could give testimony after testimony of the faithfulness of God and how he has blessed you and helped you when you've been faithful in your tithing, 
and in your giving. So I just want to commend you for that. Today's offering is for our Mission Possible ministry that's in our congregation. They will take these funds that you give today and they will bless missionaries and leaders around the world. Our nation is not the only one struggling with this sickness right now. There are leaders in our own church family. There are pastors and leaders who have contracted this disease, have passed away from this disease in other countries that we know. And so we want to help them as much as we can this morning through this offering. So it is for Mission Possible. All the ways you can give, many of you are familiar, but if you're not, you can give online at harvest-ministries.org. That is our church website. Go there and give. If you have the Tidely app or you want to download the Tidely app and give through that app, you can certainly do that this morning. You can give that way. You can also text to give. You can text the word give if you'd like to give your tithes, or you can text the initials MP for Mission Possible to 540-218. Two seven four nine, and we know that some folks don't give online. They don't like to give their information out that way. And we understand that, and we appreciate that. If you'd like to mail a check to the church office, it is Harvest Ministries nine zero nine Blue Ridge Boulevard, Roanoke, Virginia two four zero one two. And let me just say, even if you do not attend Harvest Ministries on a regular basis, and you tune in and watch our services, if this ministry is a blessing to you, then you can certainly support this ministry. If you have another church that you attend on a regular basis, you support your church. You give your tithes, your offering to your church. But if you don't have a home church, you're certainly welcome to give and support the ministries that we have here at Harvest Ministries in Roanoke, Virginia. Let's pray one more time before we close the service this morning. Father, again, I thank you for your blessings to us. Thank you for those who are going to give this morning. Thank you for those who have already given throughout this month. It is because of their faithfulness that this ministry continues to function and operate like it does. It is their faithfulness that makes what we're doing today possible to go into their homes and so they can watch this service with us. Bless them as they give. Bless those who are giving their tithes. Bless the 90% that's left beyond their wildest imagination. Bless those who are giving the offering for Mission Possible today or for some other offering. Let them receive the blessing that is pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Such a blessing that they cannot contain it. I pray it and believe it with them. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you have a great rest of your weekend. And remember to join us on Wednesday night at seven o'clock on the Harvest Ministries Facebook page for our Bible study on the gifts of spirit. God bless you. We love you.